Peace family. When I utter the words lead poisoning, what city in the USA do we know that, that brings the mental images of lead poisoning? None other than what? Flint, Michigan. You know, thousands of residents there suffered from lead poisoning when the city deviated their water into lead pipes and, and those, that lead leached into the water and poisoned the residents. You know, it was a pediatrician who was able to see what was happening when she was testing the blood levels of the children in that particular town and saw a, a high rate of lead poisoning in the children's blood. Now, what if I told you that a new study came out? and that there are 3,000 communities here in the USA that suffer from lead poisoning, but on a rate that is exponential, double that of Flint, Michigan. There's about 1,100 communities here in USA that has four times higher lead poisoning in the blood in the individuals and the children than Flint, Michigan. Yeah, it's a travesty. And so that's something that we have to continue to talk about. Now we're, you know, the, the political campaign, we hardly heard anything about Flint, Michigan and what was happening in Flint, Michigan. You know, even now when we do hear something about what's going on in Flint, Michigan, you know, we recently heard about the, uh, uh, the criminal charges on some of, uh, some of the city workers, you know, and that's nothing but a scapegoat, you know, because it, those orders came from a higher, higher um, individual, and I'm going to say the gover governor at this time, to allow these residents' waters to be poisoned. Now, but we're talking about 3,000 other communities who are suffering, but no one's talking about it. And so that's why I want to talk today about lead poisoning. How, where, how does it happen? Where does it come from? And how do we protect ourselves from it? As a mother, I'm always looking at ways to protect my children. And sometimes there are hidden dangers that we don't see. And so I want to talk about the hidden dangers of lead poisoning. So where can we find lead poisoning? Now, in the 1970s, uh, there was a federal law passed that, you know, lead, that paint cannot have lead in it. Also, gasoline, the lead that were in gasoline, had to be taken out. But if you live in a house that's older um, than 1970s, you know, then more than likely there is probably some remnants of lead in that particular house. If it's not in, in the paint, you, if you see the paint that is chipping, then you may be cautious about that. The other thing is the pipes in the particular house, the plumbing pipes. A lot of those pipes are rusted. Um, a lot of the pipes have the solder that has um, the, the copper pipes, which has the lead solder in it. And so, you know, these pipes, when they leach the rust, they leach the lead inside the water. And so if you are using water in these, in these old buildings, then I suggest that you make sure that you get it tested. Now, there are programs in, within the health department in your community um, that will provide funding uh, or a stipend or a nominal amount for you to be able to get your water tested. But, you know, my thing is make sure you get your water tested. The other thing is where you can find um, lead in the environment is in the dirt. Now, you know, a lot of the dirt hasn't been cleaned up. And a lot of times because of the dust, the dust rises and it comes into your home or your children are walking on it or playing in it. And so that is another source of contamination that you can possibly get lead poisoning from. So it's important that as, as you know, just your hygiene in your house, being clean, being clean in your house, um, that you, you dust the window seals, you dust the fans, you know, you make sure that if it's possible not to have carpet in your house because carpets are just, just on a side note, they're just filthy and they bring so many other contaminants. You know, make sure that you take your shoes off when you enter your home because the ground could have possibly contaminants from lead that we're bringing into our homes and we don't even know it. Um, when we um, drink water from our own tap faucets, you know, if you turn on the water, make sure that if it's cold, you let the water run for at least 30 seconds. I would not suggest you drinking any hot water, warm water out of your faucet. Um, wouldn't trust it, you know, not nowadays, because you don't know who's contaminating what or, or who's putting what in the water source. Um, but the biggest thing as a, as a parent, when we buy our toys for our children, a lot of those toys have lead in them, had lead in the paint. You know, we buy items off of Amazon or wherever we get them from cheaply. And what happens is we get them from places from China and they use lead paint. And, and you know, we're putting food and drink and things in these cups that are glazed with these paints and we're ingesting them. 
So, you know, those are some of the places that we can look for these hidden dangers. Now, what happens to the body when um, our children and ourselves are exposed to lead poisoning? Well, what you'll see is developmental issues. If, if the mother is pregnant, you know, she may have uh, uh, miscarriages and not even know why she's having these miscarriages because of the poisoning that's in her blood and going into her placenta. Um, the other thing is that, you know, as children are developing um, just physically, their bodies are like sponges and they're absorbing everything that comes in. And so what happens is children are most susceptible to the lead poisoning because of their bodies being like sponges. And so when you see your, your children start having developmental issues, they start having cognitive issues, they start having um, issues with their motor abilities. You know, a lot of parents think, oh, my child has autism. But you know what? It may be because they may have lead poisoning in their system. And when you have the lead poisoning in your system, it is extremely hard to be able to recover from that. And so that's why it's important to pay attention to, to your environment as it concerns lead. Now, some of the other problems that your children may um, suffer from and you need to pay attention to is they may have decreased bone and muscle growth, um, poor muscle coordination, um, again, damage to their nervous system and their kidneys. Um, they may have hearing problems as a result of lead poisoning, um, sp uh, speech and language problems, again, they may be disruptive in school. They may have what you call ADHD, and the parents are having issues with them learning. It could be because of lead poisoning. So I suggest that every parent gets their child uh, blood tested so that you'll know exactly what's going on in the child's environment and also you as well. Now, you'll have what's called acute toxicity. That means it's a high level for a short period of time, or you'll have short levels of lead poisoning for a long period of time, which becomes chronic. But either way, it's extremely damaging to the body. Now, there are treatments for lead poisoning. If you go to the hospital, they'll have what you call chelating uh, services or ch uh, chelating treatment where they use chemicals, certain chemical compounds to attach to the lead that helps uh, remove it from the body. The other thing is diet is going to be extremely important. And I know I talk about diet a lot, but especially with our children, we give them all kind of junk foods. Their immune system is extremely lo low nowadays. We have many children who are obese, and we don't give them enough um, fiber. We don't give them enough leafy green vegetables. We don't give them enough calcium. And if we do, we give them milk, whole milk, which really doesn't have any really good properties in it. But the biggest thing is we want to make sure that our children get enough iron, our children get enough calcium in their diet, and our children get enough vitamin C in their diet because that is going to help eliminate and guard against lead poisoning. Now, you don't want to overgive or, or, you know, because you can poison somebody with iron, you can poison somebody with too much vitamin C and too much calcium. So you, you want to give them the recommended amount, but you want to make sure that you pay attention to their diet. Now, what are some ways that we can uh, protect ourselves or protect our homes from lead poisoning? Again, pay attention to the plumbing in your house. If you live in an older house, be careful with the renovations. I wouldn't suggest that you do renovations with your children around because more than likely you're going to stimulate dust and bring up lead from uh, the paint or the crevices and the cracks. So be careful on that. Once you do the re renovations in those particular houses that have been built after 1960, or before 1970 rather, then you may want to get your home uh, professionally tested. The other thing is you want to make sure that your house is clean of dust. Every chance you get, make sure that you wipe it down with a wet rag to eliminate any type of dust that may have risen and settled because of the lead. If you see paint on the wall that has been flaking, Try to get it out of your house immediately. Watch your children because they'll pick it up, they'll eat it. You'll have certain children who have what you call pika where they have a compulsive uh, or, you know, they just want to continuously eat dirt and paint and pick at stuff and eat it and it has no nutritional value. So you want to pay attention to if you have children like that, make sure that you keep that out of the reach of children. Also, watch where your children pr play. That's very important because if they're playing on the, the ground near the streets, near the freeways, near the bridges, you better believe that there is going to be 
lead contamination in the soil. Take your shoes off before you come in the house. But most importantly, be aware and share this information to somebody else. Because, you know, we're watching Flint, Michigan. We're watching what's happening there. They, you know, we feel helpless to help them, but we can also help ourselves and help our own community. 3,000 communities, high level of lead poisoning, that's a travesty. You know, we look at the rise of crime. We look at the education levels of our children and the cognitive abilities of our children and autism. And we can probably most likely trace it back to lead poisoning. So let's be vigilant in our own areas. Let's be vigilant in our own homes and share this information. Thank you.